So this is it. We're at the end of the day. We're going to wrap up a little bit early. Probably that's exciting to some of you. Uh, we've covered a lot. We've covered a lot at a high level, which is kind of part of the process when you start. So we were looking at the very beginning of the day, what are some of my weaknesses? What are some of my problems? Maybe over the course of the day, if you're a community, you came in thinking, I've just got this and this wrong with my system. My infrastructure is wrong. Maybe you've thought, all right, maybe there's some other things I should work on too. If you're someone coming from Service NL, hopefully just the discussion gave you a chance to reflect on, maybe I need to reach out to my communities a little bit more, or maybe there's things I could do a little bit differently. But when we're thinking about going from these problems and finding a solution and eventually getting to the point of maybe you need more money to come up with a solution, there's a path. So you want to have a process and a method to what you're doing. And with that in mind, the Municipal Affairs and Environment have come up with these standard operating procedures. And I think there should be one on every table. It's sort of this bigger, wider sheet. There's a lot of information on it. In general, does everyone have one they can reference? Yeah? There's 18 of these different sheets. So 18 unique standard operating procedures that all kind of follow the same process. And we're going to look at one as an example. We're going to look at the very first kind. So if we went back to the beginning of the day where we talked about there are different kinds of boil water advisories. One of those was I'm in a community, I don't even have a disinfection system. So I'm on a BWA for code A. And up here, if you're a community and you're not sure what kind of boil water advisor you're on, there's a listing that's maintained that'll tell you the date that a BWA was issued and the reason for it. But if you were in a community and you had this scenario where you didn't have a disinfection system, you'd go to the Municipal Affairs website and you could pull up the standard operating procedure. And visually what's happening here, you've got the left side of your page where you're figuring out what the problem was. So we have different problems. In a community, there's something that needs to change. So in this community, they're looking at it and they're finding out, why do I have a boil water advisory? I've got it because I don't have a disinfection system. Pretty straightforward for these guys. Some of those codes, they get a little bit more complicated. There's different reasons why you don't have enough chlorine or there's different reasons why you're seeing a microbiological threat in a water source. In this scenario, it's, it's not too bad. No disinfection system or maybe there's a bit of a problem with the staffing. Maybe they don't understand why we need a disinfection system. So there's two potential causes. Once you figure out the problem, you start figuring out, okay, what steps could I follow? And there's various things you could do. Most all of them are kind of moving in the same direction, the general theme we had today. Starts at the beginning. The owner should contact government services and other agencies. Reach out for support. If you're internalizing all your problems as a community, you're never going out beyond your borders, it's going to be hard to get a solution. So the very first thing this community would do would reach out, try to get a little bit more guidance get some assistance in educating people in the community to try to get them on board. We want a system, we want to get better because of keeping people safe. We want to have more tourism. We want to have more opportunities for people in the community. Once you start getting a bit of that managerial capacity built up, a little bit of that financial capacity might come into it eventually. So you're going to have to apply for some funding. The management team in the community is going to try to reach out now and like Clooney was showing, put in an application. And you're going to want to get a strong application in. And it's not really that hard to sell a water system upgrade. If you're in a community and you've been on a boil water advisory for 15 years, approaching the government and looking for funding to say, we'd like to not be in that scenario anymore. We'd like to have better water. You can't deny that. But you want to have a good case. You want to show in, OK, we're, we've thought about a solution. And that solution is to get this kind of system in place. We're going to have these funds to back it up. You want to have a plan again. So eventually, hopefully, it's a scenario where you went out and you secured some financial resources. You've maybe educated people a little bit on why it's important. And then you get your equipment. You get your money. Now you get it installed. Make sure everyone's educated. Know how to use the system. 
everyone's involved in the purpose of disinfection. Still, maybe you're getting people doing uh, the residual testing for you. It's a community effort. Eventually, there's going to be a process that's followed where the community has to reach out again. So a lot of communities forget that next step. There's a large number of communities that probably don't realize, and we've seen evidence of this, they have a working disinfection system, they do residual testing, but they've been on a boil water advisory for so long that they didn't realize that they were supposed to reach out to the government to say, can you please come test our water? They've been waiting for people to come, or they thought the people that were coming were doing that for them. So that community has to know, okay, it's my chance now, I'm gonna reach out, we feel like we're ready, we've been trained, we've got our equipment going again, let's get some testing. Ideally, tests come in, everything looks good, boil water's lifted. And then you don't just stop there. So we'll have that again in a couple slides, but eventually there are gonna be some long-term corrective measures. The goal for a lot of these communities, and the goal of this workshop really is, how do you move from I'm on a boil water advisory to not on a boil water advisory? There's probably some more upgrades that have to happen in the system, but that leap from being on a boil water advisory to not anymore is something they want to focus on. That's your first priority. Maybe in the long term, there's other issues. Like maybe you have high THMs. We didn't really talk about that today, but that's an issue. Of greater priority to the community is keep people safe, make sure the disinfection is working properly, and get rid of that boil water advisory if you can. So you want to move on from that point to make sure you're trying to improve, getting better. So there's a reminder. Communities have to reach out. So once you get things up and running, and all of these boil water advisory standard operating procedures, even if it's just changing the way you disinfect, that community has to reach out. And the communities can't forget that. And they can't forget preventative maintenance and the benefits that they'll see if they start doing things that maybe are a bit unusual to them. Maybe for a long time they've had these pipes in the ground, they've not thought, and thought about them. They've been out of sight, out of mind, so you've never done maintenance, you've never thought about how old they are, you've maybe fixed a break when it happened, but then you just moved on. You didn't think about, well, maybe we should upgrade that part of the system that's been breaking. So you're finding ways to improve. A big part of preventative maintenance is reminding communities and community leaders reminding their operators, you gotta track what you do. So you wanna have some routine procedures, especially if you're looking at things like chlorine residual monitoring. At the back of your little stack of papers today, there's a table. It's a useful table. It's a way of the operator on a daily basis, because they have to check chlorine residuals daily, saying, I went out at this time, at this location, chlorine residual was X. You do that every day, and then you get a long-term record. And as a community, you wanna be able to show that record to your EHO, to engineers, to someone if you've got a problem, to show this is what's happened. It's not enough to just say, I've been doing this stuff for a few years and chlorine residuals are sometimes this, sometimes that. You need some record, you gotta have a bit of a plan. And maybe you need a bit of help coming up with that plan, because it might be a bit different. If you've been on a boil water for so long, you don't really know what to do next. So as part of the current BWA reduction initiative, there is a mentorship program where interested communities can approach municipal affairs for the opportunity to work with us as consultants, maybe come up with a plan to have someone come out and visit your community to do a bit more of that boil water assessment tool, really get into a bit more detail to figure out where your threats are. Even if you're not a part of the mentorship program, you kind of want to do that. You want to go back to your community and start picking apart where problems might be. And something, if you're going back to your community and you're an operator, or if you're a community leader, there needs to be a bit of a change of perspective on the way we look at boil water advisories in the province. So there's always this thought that if you are a system that's not currently on a boil water advisory and then you issue one, the operator's done something to mess it up. It's their fault that we're on a boil water advisory. That's not true. Managing a system it's challenging. There's a lot of different parts. We talked about different kinds of assets. Things can fail. The problem occurs when an operator feels like, I don't want to issue a boil water advisor because everyone will think I screwed up. 
the problem occurs when they don't issue a boil water advisory and things linger and then people are exposed to risk. So the operator has to feel comfortable with that scenario like earlier when equipment might fail they know okay I gotta reach out to these people and tell them there's a problem and then you're gonna have a boil water advisory for hopefully a short amount of time eventually you'll make some changes and it'll get lifted communities you're gonna have boil water advisories they might come and go but the avoidance of ever being on a boil water advisory is an unrealistic expectation for a lot of small communities they have to get more comfortable with that process reach out to people find a solution Make sure people are safe. And a part of leaving here today, that if you just stop with, okay, I learned a bit more about boil water, great. You kind of got to leave here today with at least something. And when it comes to problems, usually you want to start small. You don't try to say, look at that board over there with all that technical stuff. I've got 20 of those. Where am I going to start? You don't start with 20, you just start with one. Find something small. You might be a community that doesn't have enough resources financially. Okay, figure out a way to get someone to come in and give you a bit more guidance on managing your, your existing money. And maybe try to get a Capital Works funding application together. Maybe it's a little bit late this year. Maybe you still have time, but at least have a plan. Or if you have one operator in your community and they're 75, Maybe they're not able to do what you need them to do to be off a of boil water advisory. Maybe they don't have time to go out to all these different locations. Maybe try to get some more volunteers. Tell people why they should help out. Give an opportunity to get better. That's it. You just got to pick something. Try to reach out. There's a lot of benefit to that. And the biggest takeaway for a lot of communities is fear of leaving boil water advisories because what would happen if I ever go back on a boil water advisory? The big thing is, it's not perfection. We've learned that over and over, things are gonna happen. But you gotta to commit to learning from things that didn't work out before. If you're in a community and do the same thing wrong over and over again, or you notice the same thing happening over and over again, and you never try to make a change, you never try to get different, it's not gonna work out in the long run. So there's a saying, it's all about, I gotta do less bad, more good. So that's what you got to do. As a leader, as an operator, as someone in government, you got to find a way to make things a bit better because we have to improve. Our capacity has to build. And a big part of today, you just showing up, talking to people from communities, other communities, other people in government. It's building capacity. It's getting better. So I really appreciate everyone coming in and chatting. I think everyone on our team does and in the provincial government too. So thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.